In this video, we're going to take a look at exponential growth and decay. In particular, we're going to take a look at natural growth and decay. Now, all growth and decay problems follow the same pattern, and that is that the rate of change of y is proportional to the amount of y present. So how much it changes is dependent on how much we have. So here we have dy dt is proportional to y. So this symbol here is a proportional symbol. Or we can say that dy dt is equal to k times y, where k is called the constant of proportionality. Now to solve for y, think about a finding a function whose derivative is a constant multiple of itself. Now you've actually seen this function in this unit so far, and that is the exponential function that looks like this. So we have y of t, so I'm saying that y is dependent on t, is equal to c times e to the power of kt. Now we actually haven't seen this exactly, but if you think about it, if I take the derivative, of this function, I have y prime of t. Now c is the constant, so it's going to still be c. And remember that the derivative of e to the power of anything is still itself, so it's e to the power of k times t. And then we take the derivative of the exponent, which is going to be then times k. So if you take a look, and you'll notice that this part here is actually the same as what we started with. So I can replace that part of the term with y of t times k. Or sometimes you will see it like this. So I can also say y prime of t is equal to k times y. Now, if our t value is equal to zero, then we have that y of zero is equal to c times e to the power of k times zero. And remember that anything to the power of zero is actually one. So we have y of zero is equal to c, where c is then the initial value of the function. And it's the initial value because this is y of 0. That's when the time is 0, and that's when we're starting. So I can now replace my c value over here, or even back up here, with y of 0. And we actually call this y not with a little zero on the bottom, times e to the power of kt. So y is what we call the final amount. y not, the z little zero, is our initial amount. e is 2.718281. Eight to eight, and so on. So it's non-repeating. Remember, k is called the proportionality constant, and t is our time. Now, a couple of notes: if the quantity grows with time, then k is going to be greater than zero. So that's when it's growing. If the quantity decays with time then k is less than 0. Okay? And this is relative growth rate, meaning that it depends on what it was before. Now, one other term that you might not have known um, is something called the half-life. And this is called the length of time for a quantity to reduce by half. Now, this natural growth and decay can apply to many different types of problems. So, for example, we might want to know um, how something is growing in size um, by population, uh, the amount that we have, the existing demand in perhaps um, a marketing. Um, it also decays. 
also to the amount present. Uh, perhaps an investment is getting smaller and smaller, you're losing money. Um, the concentration in a chemical uh, compound, or maybe intensity at a certain depth as things get deeper and deeper. Now, let's take a look at some examples of how we can apply this formula. So this one here, we have a certain culture of bacteria in triples in six hours. So there are initially eight bacteria, and we want to find a formula for the mass remaining after a certain amount of time, let's say t hours. So we're going to use the formula y is equal to y naught times e to the power of kt. And we're going to first, we need to find out what k is. We need to find the proportionality constant so that we can find a formula, which is what we're trying to do. So the important thing here to know is that it triples in six hours. So if I originally have an initial amount, which we'll call y naught, then after six hours, it's going to have three times that amount. So we say three times y naught. And then this is multiplied by e to the power of k times six. So the only variable that we don't know is the variable k. So we're going to divide both sides by y naught. So we get three equals e to the six times k. And we want to bring this exponent to the base since our variable is an exponent. So we're going to take the natural logarithm on both sides. So we say ln 3 is equal to ln e to the power of 6k. So we're going to move the 6 times k to the front times ln e. And then remember that ln and e um, is equal to 1. So now we're going to divide both sides by 6. So k is equal to ln 3 divided by 6. So therefore our formula is y is equal to 8, 8 because it says that initially there are 8 bacteria times e to the power of ln 3 over 6 times t. Now it's nicer to actually leave this as an exact value, uh, ln 3 over 6, but we can also calculate it by using your calculator. So we're going to leave it here because then it's more exact when I figure out the next part of the problem. So the question says find the number of bacteria after 28 hours. Now what I can do is I'm going to plug in the 28 in for RT. And plug it in into my calculator. I get 1347.89. So I guess you can, if you wanted to round, you could say there's 1,348 bacteria, or sometimes people even say there's 1,347 because that last one hasn't grown yet. All right, uh, let's take a look at one more type of problem. After how long will there be 2,000 bacteria? So this time we are trying to find our time. So we're going to plug in 2,000 for our final amount equals 8 times e times ln 3 divided by 6 to the power of t. So we're trying to isolate our t. We're not going to ln both sides because then I can avoid using any of my log rules. I'm going to divide both sides by 8 first because if you do log both sides then you're going to have to use uh, the multiplication, the product rule. So I want to avoid that to make it easier. So I'm going to get 250 is equal to e to the power of ln 3 over 6 times t. And again, we want to find our t, which is an exponent. So we're going to take the natural logarithm on both sides. And then we're going to bring the exponent down. to the front times the natural log of e, which then this part here, remember, is 1. So t is equal to ln 250. And we're going to multiply that by 6 and then divide by ln 3. So what I did here, if you want to note, 
is I multiply this side by 6 over ln 3 to cancel that off. So I need to multiply this also by 6 over ln 3. So then my time, plugging this into my calculator, is 30.155 hours. All right, I want to show you one more type of problem. And um, that is compound interest. So recall the compound interest formula, if you don't know it. And it is P bracket 1 plus R divided by N to the power of N times T. So A is what we call our final amount. P is our principal. Oh, I think this one's wrong. Um, R is the interest rate as a decimal. N is the number of compounding periods, which means how many times we get paid or we have to pay in one year. And T is our time. So let's take and compare uh, what happens when $3,000 is invested at 5% interest for seven years. Uh, find how much is worth compounded daily and then continuously. All right, so for daily, we would say that A is equal to, we start off with 3,000. One plus, our rate is 0 0.05. And we're compounded it daily, so this means that we're gonna divide by 365. And then N, times our time, 365 times seven. So plugging this into the calculator, we get $4,257.10. All right, what about continuously? Continuously means that it's natural growth. It's continuously, it's always being compounded. Whereas compounded daily means that at the end of each day, that amount is then reinvested. But continuously means all the time consistently so this one we start with 3000 and we multiply this by e and our k value for here will be our 0 0.05 our interest rate and that's going to be times by seven so our amount after this is four thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars and 20 cents. So it's very similar, but you'll notice that continuously is always better because you're getting paid interest basically instantaneously and all the time. That's what continuously means. And that is when we use the E as our base as opposed to um, a different value as our base. All right, so you can try some of the other questions on your own.